Hi, I'm Matt here in Michigan. And I'm Randall here in Texas. This week, Matt and I are taking a look at Ghostbusters. No, not that one. Ghostbusters. No, not that one. Matt, Ghostbusters. No, not that one. Ghostbusters, 1984, starring Bill Murray, Sigourney Weaver, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, William Atherton, directed by Ivan Reitman. The classic film, Ghostbusters. Yeah, I don't know that I need to explain too much about this movie because you guys probably already know, but for those who don't, this movie is about three former professors who decide to go into business to capture and incarcerate ghosts that had a 25 to 30 million dollar budget but has earned more than 296 million dollars making this the most successful comedy of the 1980s it was released to critical acclaim and has become a cultural phenomenon we're talking two sequels a reboot multiple cartoon shows and video games This movie is iconic. Even the symbol Ghostbusters is one of the most recognizable symbols in the world. And some people, Matt, will say, well, if it's so well known and everyone loves it and it's universally acclaimed, why are you guys even bothering? Because it's one of our favorite films. And we want to talk about one of our favorite films. That's why. I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it. This is one of those movies that we probably have a lot to say, but we don't really need a whole lot of notes because, I don't know, I I would say this is one of those movies that we watch probably once a year, maybe a couple times a year. Uh, This is a classic. Why do you like Ghostbusters? What makes it a film worthy of so much praise? I think this is one of those movies that you can enjoy it for many different reasons depending on what age you are. So when I was a kid, my favorite scenes were actually when they were like fighting ghosts and the ghosts were on the screen and stuff. And then when you get older, you start to pick on the humor and stuff. You start to pick up on what the dialogue is actually saying and what it actually means. That's the bedroom, but nothing ever happened in there. What a crime. I think those are part of the reasons that make this movie a classic. That it can be enjoyed by a wide variety of people. Absolutely right. Dude, the the amount of slapstick in this is actually really low, especially by standards of today. But there's just enough, like, special effects and lights and fun going on that when we watched it as kids, eh, younger than we should have watched it. But hey, eh. Nah, Honestly, a lot of that stuff went right over our heads. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, 100% correct. The adult humor in this, of which there is ridiculous amounts, I didn't catch. I didn't understand it. Say what? I'll take Miss Barrett back to her apartment and check her out. I'll go check out Miss Barrett's apartment. It's what helps this film age so well, is as an adult, you watch it and you pick up so much more. There's so much subtlety in this film i don't even remember when it was but i finally picked up on the you know after they incarcerate slimer there's just egon with his fingers you know and he's telling bill murray's character he's telling uh vankman this is how much it's going to cost because this is how much money we need now let's talk seriously now for the entrapment we're going to have to ask you for four big ones four thousand dollars for that but we are having a special this week on Proton charging and storage of the beast, and that's only going to come to one thousand dollars. Fortunately, heck, if I remember when I first caught it, but I love that it's it's there, and that this movie has tons of that subtle physical humor, subtle you know flat comedy in it. It it works for all ages. It's, it's ridiculous. That's one of the things too. This movie is one of those quotable movies. Ray. When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes! But I think a great part of that is I think you quote different parts of this movie too, depending on your age. So like I said, there's some parts that when you're a kid you'll be quoting, and then when you get older and get some of the jokes that you didn't get as a kid, you start quoting those different parts. 
people look fondly at this movie and i think it still holds up and stuff well today maybe some of the special effects may be a little bit dated and stuff for the 80s and you know it, it is a different time it definitely is a movie that takes place in the 80s but i think it's still an enjoyable movie today you know what's fun about the quotes that you were talking about is Besides just the ridiculous amount of them, we could do an entire review that's just quoting the film, but then we might as well just watch the film. I think we better split up. Good idea. Yeah, we can do more damage that way. I want to take particular you know, notice to Ernie Hudson's character, Winston. He's got like 14 lines or something stupid in this film, like a tiny amount. His, his role in the film kept getting paired back and kept getting paired back and kept getting paired back. But... Every time he speaks, it's quotable. Uh, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. I have seen that'll turn you white. Again, that kind of joke, I didn't get that when I was watching this as a five-year-old. Oh yeah, definitely when I was a five-year-old. Okay? Don't blame my parents. <laughs> Dude, I had so many different... Ghostbusters toys and stuff, the Ghostbusters van and stuff, the toys where you, you squeeze the legs and they, they become frightened and stuff. A lot of the times when people start talking about films that they that they love, especially in their past, we, we get into just rose-colored glasses territory. But I'm happy to say that with Ghostbusters, even though there are some things that have not aged, for example, why is Dr. Venkman carrying around anything that could put a patient down the way he put Dana down? Okay, yeah, not aged well. Got it. The film still stands super well. This film still entertains, the jokes still hit, the comedy's still good, and for 1984, the special effects are still fantastic. I mean, yeah, it's not like new, but... This is a film I can look back and say, without rose-colored glasses, it's fantastic. I just love, like, the characters and stuff, too. They don't just fit certain roles. I would talk kind of about Ernie Hudson's character a little bit, but man, Rick Moranis, especially in this one, too, as a secondary character, I crack up just about every time he's on screen for this. The different types of humor, like, a lot of these guys, you know, they're comedians and stuff, but they all have that different type of comedy to them and i think it all hits with um uh, bill bridge you know definitely a different approach than say like a dan Aykroyd in this film but they both hit really well and there's one scene in particular i want to point to it's when they get their first call the ghost supposed to get their first call and they're going down the pole the fireman's pole and you see just how differently they each attack the pole shows you a little bit about their personality Ray, you know, is running to it, you know, all excited, going down the pole real fast. And <laughs> Dr. Bakeman just kind of like, you know, ah, he's still got his chopsticks, you know, in his mouth, holding on to his Chinese food, you know, just, you know, casually going down the pole. And then you see Egon, you know, kind of like frightened as he's like going down the pole and stuff too. Just that small little scene that only takes a few seconds tells you a lot about our characters. Get her! <laughs> Get her! <laughs> that was your whole plan. Get her. It was scientific. That was the plan. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Matt and I definitely do all the time, like, we might be in the middle of just any random, normal conversation, and a response to a comment might be a Ghostbusters quote. There's a really good chance that it might slip in from time to time. I couldn't help it. It just popped in there. I, I do that with other people, un, unknowingly even, all the time to my wife, my poor wife. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, it's Ghostbusters. Well, Matt would have got it. <laughs> One thing I will say is there are parts of this movie that are possibly a little bit scary, especially for younger audiences. I'm just remembering stuff when I was a kid, you know, especially the scene where Dana is getting grabbed by the chair and sucked into the kitchen. That was a scary scene for me. Heck, even some of the dog chase scenes were a little bit scary too. No Ghostbusters review or conversation could be complete without a, uh, what did you do, Ray? 
It's the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I love the behind the scenes of this. And, you know, it's definitely the spot where you can really tell in the film at the climax where they use some bigotures or, or even legitimate miniatures because the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man is just a guy in a big, you know, guy in a suit. It's straight up, you know, Godzilla thing. It just goes to show, like, the ridiculousness of it. Like, hey, this is supposed to be a bad guy in Gozer who's going to bring about, you know, the end of the world. And you get to choose who's going to destroy you and, and has no bearing on what even is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I don't know, but that's what we're going with. You choose your destructor. It could have could have been anything. You could have thought of Darth Vader. Darth Vader would have been more successful. <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> It just goes to show the the kind of absurdity that that goes into this you know this film and again it's so enjoyable if you're one of the people who's never seen ghostbusters i beg you to watch it and comment it's so rare being such a famous film to meet someone who hasn't seen it like i said if you are one of those people please comment randall and i want to know what you think about ghostbusters what do you think of our review be sure to give us a thumbs up Subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications. Just to let you know, we have movies that are reviews, I should say, that come out every Monday and Thursday. So you can keep on that schedule to know. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook page. We will always post the topic of our next video the day before it's set to come out. Um, for now, I'm Matt here in Michigan. Have a good day. And I'm Randall here in Texas. I'll see everyone later. Next time on No Market Media. Please consider checking out some of our other videos.